Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend Antio Tamanas and it's going to be yet another session in this lecture series on dynamics. Well, the problem that I'm going to take up today is this one. But first of all, I suggest all of you to pause the video right now, go through this description and I'm sure that you can understand this arrangement in a much, much better way. All right. Okay, I'm assuming that you've read the question. So here it is. So there are essentially two blocks. One block is on this incline. All right, at an angle of 45 degrees and this block is sort of suspended with the help of a pulley now these two blocks are connected okay first of all this connection is between this block and this pulley okay over here and then there is this pulley which is actually or onto which this block 2 is actually suspending now as far as the mass of these blocks is concerned now this over here that is block 1 is having a mass of let me write this over here how much this is 150 kgs all right so we know the mass 150 kgs and then block 2 that is this block is having a mass of 100 kgs 100 kgs and guys you can clearly see that this block 1 is in contact with this incline so there is definitely going to be some sort of friction and that's 0.2 so let me write the coefficient of friction over here that is 0.2 so that's all the given data that we have what we need to do is we need to find the tension in the string and also we need to find the acceleration of these two blocks on a separate basis okay so we need to find these are the outputs acceleration a1 that is block 1 block 2 block 2's acceleration and then finally we also have to find the tension t also all right so how can all these th things be accomplished well basically i've divided the solution into three parts or three steps you can see in step we're going to um work out the direction of motion whether this block is going to go down the plane or up the plane this has to be decided in step one and if it goes down the plane this will move upwards and if it goes up the plane this is going to go in the downward sense and then we'll try to develop a relationship between these two blocks that means block one and block two in step number two okay and then finally in step three we are going to carry out the motion analysis separately where i'm going to be applying the newton's second law of motion to frame those equations summation of all the forces equal to product of mass and accelerations okay separately for these two blocks and then finally we'll we'll eventually be able to work out the magnitude of tension t and accelerations a1 and a2 so let's start with the step number one that is the direction of motion and it's going to be very simple so first of all right now in order to work out the direction of motion we are going to assume a static case nothing moves we are assuming that this entire arrangement right now is in a state of static equilibrium and you can clearly see this is where the weight is going to act so the mass is how much it's 100 kg so obviously the weight is going to act in the downward direction g on planet earth is 9.81 meters per second square when multiplied with 100 will give you the value of weight okay that is 981 newtons now guys you can say that over here also the tension will develop in the static case will be equal to 981 newtons so essentially you can say that this pulley over here is being pulled in the downward direction by a force of how much 981 newtons okay now this 981 newtons will get divided right half half so 981 divided by 2 is going to work out as how much this is going to be um if i do this division 981 over 2 981 over 2 that's uh 490.5 490.5 all right so in the upward direction where is the cursor yes here it is in the upward direction here forces again 490.5 and here also the force is going to be 490.5 newtons all right so you can say that this block is being pulled in this direction by a force of 490.5 newtons okay so this block one is having a mass of how much 150 kgs which is obviously going to act in the downward sense this way so 150 times of g 150 into 9.81 let me see how much that works out as 150 multiplied by 9.81 and this is equal to 1471.5 okay so let me write over here 1471.5 newtons and this weight over here is going to have two components one perpendicular to the plane while the other along the plane this angle 
will obviously be equal to 45 degrees and there is going to be a component here also this is going to be the cos component so you can write this as 1471.5 cos 45 and this should probably work out as cos 45 let me do this calculation this is working out as 1040.5 to be very precise okay so let me write over here 1040.5 newtons and over here also uh, it's going to be 1471.5 sine 45 now guys uh, you must know this sine 45 and cos 45 both of them are same 1 by root 2 so this value is also going to work out as 1040.5 newtons all right so we've essentially worked out the forces that's the component of the weight and that's the tension but since this block is in contact with this incline there is going to be some sort of friction also okay so friction basically can be written as product of uh, coefficient of friction multiplied by the or the friction force can be written as coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal now this is basically a static case that we have assumed n will be equal to this 1040.5 newton so we are going to put that value over here mu is obviously 0 0.2 multiplied by 1040.5 you just do this calculation 0 0.2 multiplied by 1040.5 and that is precisely 208.1 okay 208.1 so let me write this again f is equal to 208.1 but the problem is we don't know whether this f is headed towards the right hand side or this f is headed towards the left hand side okay because the direction of friction completely depends on the direction of motion so if the direction is of motion is down the plane then the friction force will be towards it. this direction up the plane and if the block is moving up the plane then the friction force will be in the downward direction or down the plane okay so i'm going to be taking two cases case one f um like this down the plane and then i'm also going to take case number two in the form of f of the plane this way up the plane so let me make this in a better way so basically we are going to have a battle between the left hand side and between the right hand side you can say okay and whoever or whichever side has the maximum magnitude of force that is going to win and the block will move in that side or in that direction basically so case one when friction is towards the left hand side this way when friction is towards the left hand side okay so already we have a force of 1040.5 newtons 1040.5 newton force is already there and friction force is also acting in this direction we are assuming it this okay how much is this 208.1 so that's 208.1.1 so let me work this out lhs is going to work out as plus 1040.1 5 and that's precisely 1248.6 so the total amount of force acting in the left hand side direction is 1248.6 newtons and what about the rhs side so the only force is this 490.5 490.5 now guys you can clearly see that lhs is far greater than this rhs this is one uh, 1200 and this is 490 so lhs is greater than rhs so the block this block over here is going to go downhill down the plane so that's the basic judgment which we can have from this case you're you're going to get the same result from case 2 also let me show you lhs okay and if you if you talk about lhs there is only one force acting 1040.5 newtons and when you speak of rhs so right now we are considering this friction force to be acting uphill this way right hand side this way right hand side this way so 490.5 plus the friction force 490.5 plus the friction force that is 208.1 if you choose just do this calculation 208.1 plus 490.5 this is working out as 698.6 all right where is the cursor where is it so rhs is working out as 698.6 and again you can see lhs is more RHS is less, LHS is very large compared to RHS. So again, you can make the same conclusion that this block 1 is going to move in the downward direction, say, with an acceleration of A1. Okay. Now, one thing is for sure that this block 
is going to go downhill with an acceleration of a1 and therefore as a result of which this block 2 will move in the upward direction with an acceleration of a2 now in the next step what we'll try to do is we'll try to sort of develop a relationship between these two blocks a1 and a2 and that's going to be very simple you keep watching okay now let's say this portion of the string is represented by x1 okay and from here till we reach here and from here till we reach here let's say this is given by simply y so if you were to calculate the total length of the string this is not x1 let's say this is x only okay if you were to calculate the total length of the string it would be from here to here that is x and then from here to here that is y and then again from here till we reach here again y so x plus y plus y that is going to be the total length of the string l is equal to x plus 2 times of y all right so what's next now guys what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate this again with respect to time rate of change is something that we're going to be working out we're going to be observing so dl over dt is equal to dx over dt plus 2 times of dy over dt now rate of change of or the rate of change in fact uh, when you speak of this entire length of the string the length of the string is a constant therefore there is going to be no change and the differentiation of a constant is or the derivative of a constant is obviously zero so we have this dx over dt now guys since this block is moving in the downward direction this x will increase okay so that's a positive rate okay that's a positive increase that's why the rate of change of displacement with respect to time is nothing but the velocity and since we are talking about block one we are going to write this as v1 in the positive sense all right then we have this two times of dy over dt and you can clearly see if this is going to go downwards this block will move in the upward direction and this string length over here will keep on gradually decreasing so you have a negative rate of change so you can write this as minus of two times of v2 so essentially we have this relationship v1 equals two times of v2 and you know very well when you differentiate the rate of change of velocity in fact is acceleration so you need to differentiate this once again you're to going to get a1 is equal to two times of a2 so this relationship guys is going to be very essential for us in the next step that is step number three i'll show you why okay so here we go step number three motion analysis and this is where we're going to finally get the values of tension t and accelerations a1 and a2 it's not going to be that hard so keep on watching and it's going to be fun so let me copy the forces over here we now know very well that the motion is going to happen along this direction that is a1 and this is going to go upwards that is a2 so the components are this way I guess this is 1040.5 if I'm not wrong this is 1040.5 and here also it's the same let me check this where is it this is 1040.5 1040.5 let me write this quickly 1040.5 newtons and that's also 1040.5 newtons and now when bodies are in motion tension has to be calculated and since this is moving in the downward direction the friction is going to act somewhere here and this friction has already been calculated 208.1 newtons so essentially these are the forces acting on this block okay and we are going to carry out an analysis in this way that's x and that's y right so let's let's kick off summation of all the forces in x direction is equal to product of mass and acceleration uh, we are talking about block one so m1 and a1 all right so where is the motion happening this way so can you tell me which force is acting along this direction that is downhill that is uh, 1040.5 newtons this one all right so this has to be taken as positive and all the other forces opposite to this force will be taken in the negative sense so this is going to be very simple guys 1040.5 minus t minus 208.1 is essentially equal to mass into acceleration block one block one block one's mass is how much it's 150 150 times of a1 let me tweak this equation 
ओके वन जीरो फोर जीरो पॉइंट फाइव माइनस टू जीरो एट पॉइंट वन वन जीरो फोर जीरो पॉइंट फाइव माइनस टू जीरो एट पॉइंट वन एंड दिस इज प्रिसाइसली एट थर्टी टू पॉइंट फोर ऑल राइट सो एट थर्टी टू पॉइंट फोर माइनस टी इज इक्वल टू वन फिफ्टी टाइम्स ऑफ ए वन सो आई कैन राइट दिस एज टी इज इक्वल टू एट थर्टी टू पॉइंट फोर माइनस वन फिफ्टी टाइम्स ऑफ ए वन ओके एंड आई एम गोना डू दिस सब्सटीट्यूशन ऑफ टी समवेयर हियर ऑल राइट इट्स गोना बी फन कीप वॉचिंग एंड लेट्स डू दिस समीशन ऑफ ऑल दी फोर्सेज इन विच डायरेक्शन सो लेट से दिस इज एक्स एंड लेट से दिस इज वाई दैट्स एक्स एंड दैट्स वाई सो वेर इज द मोशन हैपनिंग इन दी वाई डायरेक्शन सो एफ वाई इज इक्वल प्रोडक्ट ऑफ मास एंड एक्सेलरेशन एम टू एंड ए टू सो वेट एक्टिंग इन द डाउनवर्ड सेंस um i guess this is 981 if i'm not wrong yeah that's 981 all right 981 newtons and we have over here just consider this as the system okay this was t this was t and this is going to be how much 2t consider this that's 2t so where is the motion happening upper direction which force is along the direction of motion it's 2t so this has to be taken in the positive sense and this one will be taken in the negative sense so we have this 2t minus 981 is equal to product of mass mass is how much it's 100 so this is going to be 100 times of a2 so you need to do a substitution over here first uh, this one is a2 now we know very well there is a relationship this is a1 and this over here is a2 and we know very well that a1 is equal to 2 times of a2 so you can write this as a2 is equal to a1 divided by 2 so let me do the substitution 2t minus 981 is equal to 100 times of a1 over 2 i can write this again 2t minus 981 is equal to 50 times of a1 and now what you need to do this you need to keep this value of t this one okay over here and once you do the substitution you are going to form an entire equation in terms of a1 this is going to be very simple let me let me go ahead and do this two times of here that is t t's value is 832.4 minus 150 times of a1 okay minus what 981 is equal to 50 times of a1 you just need to solve this equation and the final value of a1 will work out as let me check how much it is it's going to work out as 1.953 yeah 1.953 meters per second square and you can also get the value of a2 also so put the value of a1 this one over here okay you can get the value of a2 and a2 will be exactly half how much is it 0.9765 right 0.9765 and then you can put the value of a1 over here to get the value of tension t and that's also going to be very simple t is equal to how much it's going to work out as approximately 539 539.3 newtons so guys um that was all from my side for today if you've got any doubt or query do write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and If you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering mechanics then do share and like this video subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video you get a notification you get an update and do tell your friends about this channel so that they can also benefit well I'm going to be back with more such videos on mechanics and drawing until then um it's a wrap this is Manas Patnaik signing off take care have a great day keep learning